It's a hot, hot October's day, but the real heat is in the mid-size SUV segment because over the past year, there have been some big launches. With us today is the Elevate, that's Honda's long-awaited entry into the mid-size SUV segment. We have the Grand Vitara, which is Maruti's new mid-size SUV, that's also here representing its twin from Toyota, the Urban Cruiser Highrider. We have the Kia Seltos, that's fresh from a facelift. And from the Volkswagen Group, we have the VW Tiguan, that's also here on behalf of its sister from Skoda, the Kushak. And finally, we have the long-standing segment champ, the Hyundai Creta. All these SUVs have their strengths, their weaknesses and some distinct personalities. And over this video, we are going to tell you which one of them suits your needs the best. Do let us know in the comments which one of these SUVs is your pick. And if you haven't already, please do give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Autoka India channel. Let's start with looks. With their high set bonnets, upright stances and clearly defined shapes, each of these models conforms to the SUV template. However, they also take a very different approach in terms of styling. The Elevate, for instance, isn't as flashy as the other SUVs, yet draws attention with its big grille, beefy bonnet and tight surfacing. It's got a great stance too, helped in no small measure by the class-leading 220mm of ground clearance. A two-part grille and split headlights lend the Maruti Grand Vitara a distinctive front end and in general, it's a smartly turned out SUV. The Taigun is like your expat colleague, all decked up in traditional wear for Diwali. The clean lines and crisp details are classic Volkswagen and the lavish desi tarka of chrome works. That said, see the Taigun in the company of its chief rivals and it comes across as a bit smaller. The VW SUV is the shortest and narrowest of the five. Cousin Seltos and Creta look the most substantial of these SUVs and going strictly by the measuring tape, the Kia is the longest too. 2023 styling update that brought in a slightly larger grille, tweaked bumpers, revised headlights and new connected tail lamps have done their bit to refresh the handsome Kia's look. The Hyundai Creta is effectively the oldest SUV here, but even three years after launch remains polarizing in look. Hyundai will be out with the updated Creta in the coming months and Tucson-like edgy parametric details are expected. Let's move inside starting with the Elevate. When you get inside a Honda Elevate, you won't find an interior that'll wow you initially. It looks quite functional in its basic design, but the more time you spend with it, you'll start to appreciate its finer points. For instance, it's very well thought out in how you interface with all the controls. The touchscreen is in clear sight. Uh, I really like that you get physical controls for the climate control system. There are spaces for a wireless charging pad and cup holders and very nifty base for your phone right besides the handbrake. In terms of quality, it's got a hard wearing look about it, but things like the soft touch on the dashboard and the door panels do uplift things quite a bit. The Elevate's front seats are a highlight. But what does work really, really well are the seats that are as comfy as they are premium to look at. They're very well cushioned and get a big thumbs up. The view of the bonnet edges gives the all-important feel of piloting an SUV and is a plus in its own right. Into the Grand Vitara. The Maruti Grand Vitara's interior is nicely put together. The dashboard has a layered look and uses this metallic surround for the center console to good effect. And there's also soft touch materials that also extend onto the door pads that give this interior a slightly premium feel. But in other areas, you'll find there's too much of lesser Marutis in the Grand Vitara, like the steering wheel, the buttons on the windows. And in areas, plastic quality also doesn't really impress. The front seats are nice and comfy. Into the Taigun. The Taigun delivers on that build quality promise that you'd associate with a German car. The 
that sound really counts for a lot every time you get inside. And once you're inside, you like what you see. The dashboard is quite attractive. You get a nice touch screen. It's large, it's slick to use. The digital dials also add that requisite dose of modernity to the cabin and the steering wheel feels really nice to hold. But it doesn't come across as premium as you'd expect a Volkswagen cabin to be. Many of the plastics are scratchy and you can tell that this doesn't have the same attention to detail as the pricier Volkswagens. As for the seats, they offer great thigh support, great shoulder support, but for a larger framed individual like myself, side bolstering is perhaps a bit too sporty. After time, in an Elevate, Grand Vitara or Taigun, you'll find the Creta's interior a noticeably roomier space. The Creta has a smart looking dashboard, but what it really stands out for is the sense of space that it delivers. It really feels roomier than most of its mid-sized SUV rivals. And helping that feeling of airiness are the lighter materials on the dashboard and on the seats of this version of the Creta. Now talking of quality, we've said this in the past and we'll say it again, this is not the highest grade of quality that we've seen from Hyundai. While this surface looks like it's leather, it is very clearly plastic and plastics lower down are also quite scratchy. The well-cushioned front seats are comfy, but you'll miss steering reach adjust. Like the Creta, the Seltos also scores on that feeling of space and there's more to like. The Seltos' interior was already a nice place to start with, but it's been made better still with this update. Gone is that large bezel around the touchscreen and the instrument console, and it's been replaced by this nice curved display. The new arrangement not only brings the cabin up to speed, but makes it look airier as well. The Seltos also feels the most special inside. Quality levels remain really good, as does attention to detail, and I also really like the front seats. On to the matter of features. Petrol automatics are the versions we've chosen for the test and to keep a level playing field in price and power, we've considered the combination of the base petrol engine, an automatic gearbox and the highest trim where applicable. The Honda Elevate that only gets a single engine option is here in ZX CVT form, the Grand Vitara in 1.5 mild hybrid Alpha AT guys, the Seltos in 1.5 IVT HT X trim, the Tigon in 1.0 TSI AT top line form and the Creta in 1.5 IVT SX O form. All SUVs here get keyless entry and go, auto LED headlights, leather at upholstery, a sunroof, paddle shifters, cruise control, auto climate control and rear AC vents. The top spec Elevate ZX CVT has the most competitive price tag of 15.99 lakh rupees and if you think about it, it gets you enough features for the money. It's also the only one to pack in ADAS at this price point. Still, there's room for a higher spec trim with more wow features like a panoramic sunroof. The Maruti Grand Vitara 1.5 Smart Hybrid Alpha that's priced at 16.91 lakh rupees gets a panoramic sunroof but the sunshade lets in too much heat. And while it's unique for its 360 degree camera, the resolution isn't great. Sadly, Maruti has also reserved the fully loaded Alpha Plus trim that gets digital dials, ventilated front seats and a wireless phone charger only for the strong hybrid Grand Vitara. It's a similar story on the Seltos 1.5 petrol IVT that's only offered in mid-spec HDX form. The equipment list includes the all-important new addition of a panoramic sunroof, class-first dual-zone climate control, a neat digital instrument cluster, an onboard air purifier, and front and rear parking sensors. Feature in tech chunkies who want full digital dials, front seat ventilation, powered driver's seat, a 360 degree camera and ADAS will have to opt for higher spec versions only offered with the turbo petrol and diesel powertrains. Creta 1.5 IVD buyers have comparatively greater choice with the option of the fully loaded SXO trim as featured here. Highlights include a powered driver's seat, front seat ventilation, a panoramic sunroof, electric parking brake and Bose sound system. Do note a lower priced and mid-spec Creta SX is down on features to a comparable Seltos HDX. Volkswagen's recent addition of power adjust for the front seats including for the core driver's seat on the Tigon 1.0 TSI top line is a class first feature and builds on the comfort of front seat ventilation. The upgraded sound system that adds in an amplifier and subwoofer also delivers the deepest sound, bettering the Hyundai's Bose unit. 
There's wireless phone charging and a sunroof too, but you'd be left wanting for more frills given that the Tygon is the priciest SUV here at 17.59 lakh rupees. All SUVs get you large and slick touchscreens with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, with the Elevate, Grand Vitara and Tygon further offering the convenience of wireless connectivity for these features. All models also get some form of connected car tech, allowing you to remotely keep an eye on your vehicle. The Elevate, Grand Vitara and Creta also offer remote ignition, allowing you to have the vehicle cooled by the time you get in. The latter is a feature reserved for higher spec versions of the Seltos. To judge the backseat space, the driver's seat was set to Nikhil's driving position. He's just under 6 feet tall and I am over 6 feet. Let's start with the Elevate, that's second only to the Tygoon in wheelbase length. Now in the back seat of the Honda Elevate and space for one is quite nice. There is a good amount of leg room, good amount of knee room, head room is not a problem as well. And there is space to keep your feet as well. Also for your feet, you have a slightly elevated platform. The seat is very, very good in terms of cushioning and support. You don't get any step reclines here, but the angle is just right. It is a good amount of balance. Then you have the windows, nice and large wide windows, but they miss out on sun blinds. On a hot day, that could be a bit of an issue. Now in terms of seating, two adults in the back will be very comfortable. Sitting three, it will be slightly cramped. You don't get an individual headrest for this center seat and you don't even get a seat belt. You get a lap belt, but that's about it. Into the Tygoon, that's the longest in wheelbase. Alright, so in the back of the Volkswagen Tygoon and space as you can see is not a problem at all. Good amount of knee room, foot room is good too. Headroom is not a problem either. However, the seat angle cannot be adjusted. Although it's not really too upright, it's nice and comfortable and a good amount of balance. The Tygoon does feel the narrowest of the SUVs and is the tightest for three passengers. Also, when you are sitting three abreast, it is an issue for people who are sitting at the ends because the backrest is slightly contoured and that end stabs in the rear. So you're basically quite uncomfortable. Like the Elevate and the Tygoon, the Grand Vitara is not ideal for three adults at the back. Alright, so in the back seat of the Grand Vitara, space, especially in this company, is not the best. You have a decent amount of knee room, leg room is not too bad and you have some space under the front seat for your feet as well. Headroom, on the other hand, is not great, especially if you are someone who is over six feet. As you can see, my head is almost grazing the roof and even though this has this nice panoramic sunroof, the sense of space is not that great you feel a bit cramped in here now the seat comfort overall is not too bad the squabs are nice the cushioning is good too and the support is quite nice this is the standard position of the seat which might feel a tad upright but you do have a one step recline for the seat as well so it's not a massive difference only a slight angle change but it does make a big difference if rear seat space and comfort are high on your list of priorities it is the seltos and creta that should be the models of greatest interest the Korean SUVs feel the roomiest at the back and are also most accommodating for three passengers. Into the Creta first. Now the back seat of the Hyundai Creta definitely feels the roomiest. The panoramic sunroof comes right over the rear passenger's head and that is great because it just elevates the sense of space and the amount of light that is into the cabin. Space, knee room, very very good. You have a good amount of space under the front seat as well. Headroom, even though there is a panoramic sunroof, is not an issue at all. The seat is at a nice angle, but if you want to further elevate the comfort, there is a one-step recline as well. And now things are a lot more comfortable. You have a center armrest with two cup holders. You have sun blinds for the big windows. And you also have your other amenities. What's a disappointing miss is a dedicated headrest for the middle passenger. With the update, the Seltos has got the one feature that it always lacked versus its platform made the Creta a panoramic sunroof. And it's done its bit to grant the already roomy Kia a greater sense of space. The overall sense of space is quite nice and fitting three abreast is rather easy. Then of course you have the seats that are comfortable, cushioning is just right and you also have a one-step recline that makes things a bit more comfortable. And you also have a sunshade to cocoon you from the outside heat. Overall, it's a really nice back seat. The bright interior definitely elevates the sense of space and roominess. So yes, big points to the Seltos.
On airport runs and trips out of town, you'll appreciate how much luggage you can fit into an Elevate. Its 458-litre boot is easily the largest. The Creta and Seltos with 433 litres each are spacious enough. The Tygoon's deep boot is way more accommodating than its 385-litre figure would suggest and you get good enough room in the Grand Vitara's well-shaped 355-litre trunk too. Notably, luggage room is compromised in the strong hybrid Grand Vitara versions whose battery pack takes up prime real estate in the luggage compartment. All these SUVs have you covered for times when you need even more room for luggage with 60-40 split and fold rear seats. Coming to the powertrain options, the Hyundai Creta and Kia Seltos offer the widest choice with a naturally aspirated petrol, a turbo petrol and a diesel engine. The Grand Vitara comes as standard with a naturally aspirated petrol and is the only one here with the option of a strong hybrid powertrain as well. The Tygoon offers two turbo petrol options. The Elevate is offered solely with a 1.5 naturally aspirated petrol engine and actually goes up against the base petrols of its rivals. As mentioned, to keep prices level, we are considering the Elevate in petrol automatic guys here and the rivals in their base petrol and automatic transmission configurations. Where the SUVs are similar is in the front wheel drive layouts and monocoque construction. All SUVs also ride on 17-inch wheels and rely on McPherson strut front suspension and torsion bar rear suspension arrangements. We'll start the drive talk in the Elevate. Its 121 horsepower 1.5-litre IVTEC engine is shared with the city and the experience is familiar. It's an easy-going engine, very nice in city driving, but when you want more from it, that rubber band effect just comes so you can't miss it and uh, also a bit louder uh, when you're driving faster, right? It is. I mean, that boominess definitely does come into the cabin, the CVT-ness of it. The Elevate has the crispest response and is actually quickest in outright and kickdown acceleration too. But the noise levels nudge you to back off and keep the engine in its comfort zone. Which is a shame because the chassis has more to offer. Now, what about the handling? It is one of the highlights for me. It doesn't roll all that much and what works really well is the steering. It's just got such a nice weight to it. Feels very precise, feels uh, like a pretty sporty SUV. And it works really well. But what I also like is the suspension. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it feels on a bad road, it feels the toughest. It takes the bigger potholes more confidently than all of the others. So you can actually drive a bit faster as well on bad sections of road. So that's a big win for the Honda. Low speed ride is not as cushy as the Creta or Seltos and there's also most road noise in here. Still, the tough feel and class best 220mm of ground clearance count for a lot. The view of the high set bonnet also gives the feel of driving a proper SUV. Alright, so visibility out the front is great in the Elevate, but what we've also seen on other Hondas is the lane watch camera. That is heavily helpful. Really, I mean, in our uh, roads where you can have a biker or cyclist just cut in, it, it really makes a big, big difference. What the Elevate also packs in are ADAS functions. Now, this is a camera-based system and doesn't include uh, inputs from radars as well. So it's not the most sophisticated or most tech-heavy of ADAS systems. But it does its work quite well. Uh, you get automatic emergency braking. Now that's a feature which I prefer to use in higher speed settings. In low speed settings, uh, it tends to slam the brakes when you just dab them and that can catch you off guard and the vehicles behind you off guard so you have to be careful in how you use it then there is uh, the lane keep assist which works at speeds above 70 kilometers an hour works really well on smooth and well marked roads in clear conditions but yeah. at our first drive which was in the rains uh, there were times when we weren't quite sure it's reading the conditions as well as it should now, along with lane keep assist and emergency braking, what this also gets is adaptive cruise control, which means you can latch onto the car in front and maintain the speed on its own. Yeah, it's a feature that just makes long highway rides that much easier. Up next, the Grand Vitara. Its 1.5 litre naturally aspirated engine makes the least power at 103 horsepower and 137 Nm. Yeah, feels on behind the wheel. 
Well, it definitely is a car that likes to be driven in a relaxed manner because the engine, the 103 horsepower engine, not really the most potent, not the most responsive. Sedate driving is what it does best. Yeah, I think it, it works well as a city car, but uh, out on the highway, it gets caught out. The Grand Vitara is unsurprisingly the slowest of the SUVs. An unhurried driving style syncs best with the Grand Vitara's easy-going nature and it's then that you like the engine response at low speeds and good refinement. As for the gearbox... I mean, again, it is much like the engine, relaxed, easy-going, it doesn't like to be rushed at all. If you slam your foot, it's gonna drop a gear but the progress is gonna be slow. And what I found is that though you get paddle shifters, there's not much motivation to use them because this isn't a sporty car. I mean, the times I have used it is probably climbing a hill. There's a toughness to the Grand Vitara's build that shines through on broken surfaces. Bump absorption itself is quite good. And uh, what I really like is that it feels quite nice and settled at higher speeds. Yeah, once you gain some speed, then it's nice and flat, very composed. At those low speed bumps is where you feel a bit more movement compared to the rest. Handling is tidy on the whole, but in town, the steering needs more effort than the other models. Time to hop into the Tygoon that stands out in this comparison for its engine configuration. Its 1-litre, three-cylinder unit is the smallest by displacement and cylinder count, but direct injection and turbocharging also allows this 1-litre TSI to make 115 horsepower and segment best torque of 178 Nm. And it stands out for the way it drives too. Especially in this company, you really get that nice amount of performance, that grunt, especially in the mid-range, thanks to that turbocharger. And it certainly moves quite quick. The Elevate is quicker still, but the push in the mid-range is what makes the Tygoon feel sportier. The 6-speed torque converter gearbox is also game for sporty driving. As a city car, the Tygoon has its quirks. Low speed, uh... City driving, it's not bad, but I think uh, the others are slightly better. Yeah, I mean, compared to the CVTs especially, uh, it definitely feels a big difference because that smoothness, that off-the-line ease is not really there in this one. However, once it picks up pace, then it's absolutely fine. The Tygoon feels very European in its suspension setup. There's a firmness at low speeds that builds into a sure-footed feel at high speeds. A set of corners, is where that flat and that firmness of the suspension really comes into its own. Makes this car a complete joy to drive. I love the fact that it feels nice and pointy. Yeah. The handling characteristics tie in well with the engine's performance to make the Tygoon an SUV keen drivers will like. Into the Creta that's here in 115 horsepower 1.5 litre petrol guys with a CVT gearbox. It's a likeable powertrain. What it gives you is a very easy going car, easy to live with, gives you the performance that you need. And yeah, you can, even when you drive it a bit faster, yes, it isn't the most enthusiastic of engines, but it gets the job done. It does. And if you absolutely want something more, there are drive modes as well. The drive modes help fine tune responses to your liking, though the default comfort mode works well enough. It's a it's a calm SUV and what also helps that calmness is the refinement levels. I think it is the best. It even does slightly better than the Seltos uh, in terms of just general overall refinement, road noise included. Yeah, the cabin is nice and quiet and it does feel nice and premium thanks to that because it doesn't feel CVT-ish yeah. like the other cars do. The other highlight is the low speed ride comfort. That soft suspension really does make it one of the best riding cars, especially at slow speeds. Yeah, so this is uh, an SUV that you typically use in the city and you won't be going all that fast. So this is something that a lot of people will give priority to and the Creta does have the edge there by actually not having an edge. That said, over a bad patch taken at high speed, the Creta and Seltos come across as the softest of the soft roaders. Even when you're going at higher speeds, uh, it might not be the flattest riding of the SUVs, but yeah, it is pretty well settled and really not a reason for complaint. 
and finally the Krata gets traction modes too. It also has traction modes which makes it a bit easier to go on loose surfaces. Yeah, but this is not the vehicle to take onto a beach. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> A Seltos with the same engine and gearbox offers a very similar driving experience. It is just so relaxing to drive the gearbox, especially the CVT, very very linear and especially when it's city driving, when it's bumper to bumper traffic, it is really smooth. Yeah, it's got a nice uh, chilled out character about it, but it also has the performance that you need, right? It does, it does. I mean, press on the accelerator and there's instant response. You don't have to wait, there's no delay and you also have drive modes which you can obviously change the characteristics of the car, put it in sport and it becomes a bit more enthusiastic yeah. and you also have the steering that gains weight in sport mode so that's a nice touch as well. Yeah. Kia has worked on the Seltos' suspension with this update and it feels a bit more absorbent than before but it's still second to the Creta in terms of low speed ride comfort. And I mean, once it gains speed, it is nice and flat, very composed, you don't feel yeah. out of place, doesn't bounce around, so that's nice. But yeah, compared to the Creta, you do feel a slight difference. Yeah. On to the matter of safety. Six airbags are standard fit on the Creta and Seltos, while the others get two airbags as standard. Things even out when you talk fully loaded versions. Six airbags, ABS with EBD, ESC, hill start assist and Isofix child seat mounts are safety features you'd find on all. The Seltos is the only one to get handy front parking sensors in addition to the mandatory rear sensors. It's the Elevate that distinguishes itself here with a blind view monitor and advanced driver assistance systems. These features are only offered on the pricier, higher spec versions of the turbo petrol and diesel versions of the Seltos. All models comply with latest Indian crash test norms but are yet to be rated under the new government-endorsed Bharat NCAP. Private body Global NCAP had formally rated the Seltos and Creta 3 stars on crash protection while the Tigon was rated a full 5 stars, that too under a newer, more stringent scoring protocol. All models feel reassuring under hard braking, though unexpectedly, it was the models with rear drum brakes, namely the Elevate and Tigon, with braking distances shorter than the others that feature all-round disc brakes. There's a Maruti in the mix, so no surprises on which is the most efficient SUV here. The Grand Vitara's 11.6 kpl city and 15.3 kpl highway figures are impressive as petrol SUVs go. The significantly pricier Grand Vitara Strong Hybrid is more efficient still, but only makes financial sense if you have a lot of running. With the Seltos and Krata ranges, it is the diesels that will be the best fit for high usage buyers. We didn't get a chance to put the Seltos featured here through a full fuel economy loop, but expect economy to match the Krata 1.5 IVT's 10.3 kpl city and 13.8 kpl highway numbers. The Elevate and Tygoon delivered single digit economy in city driving of 8.6 kpl in the city and 8.5 kpl respectively. The economy figures improved to 13.1 kpl and 12.4 kpl respectively over a highway test loop. Idle stop start is a feature on all but the Elevate. The feature enhances efficiency by switching the engine off at long haul and automatically switching it back on when you are to get moving. But it's also a feature of limited use in India because along with the engine, it switches the AC compressor off as well. So, which is the SUV for you? We'll start with the Tigon. While it is available in more powerful 1.5 TSI guys, there's a sporty air about the 1.0 TSI too. The lively handling and turbocharged engine's punchy performance will resonate with enthusiastic drivers. What typical buyers, however, will find hard to overlook is the fact that the VW SUV looks and feels smaller than its rivals. That the made-for-India Tigon offers a watered-down Volkswagen experience also means the premium price tag isn't easy to digest. Given that the Tigon and Škoda Kushak are very similar in their overall experience, choosing between the two boils down to personal preference in looks and perhaps even proximity to a showroom. The Grand Vitara feels like an upmarket Maruti. The package has clearly hit the spot because the mid-size Maruti SUV has clocked over 1 lakh sales units in just a year since its launch. It's got the look, the efficiency and Maruti's backing. But the Grand Vitara is not the roomiest SUV and the mild hybrid version feels humdrum. To experience the best of the Grand Vitara or its Toyota twin, the Urban Cruiser Highrider, you'll need to opt for the pricier strong hybrid powertrain. 
The Honda Elevate doesn't offer a variety in engines and gearboxes and at a broader level it's a what you see is what you get kind of model. It's a handsome and practical SUV whose attractive pricing makes it a level-headed choice. And absorbent suspension, peppy performance and ADAS are also up there in the Elevate's list of highlights. The Honda SUV isn't suited for five passengers though and the average refinement and economy also mark it down. In the final analysis, it's the Kia Seltos and Hyundai Creta that come across as the best all-rounders. They are not the toughest options out there, but they are the roomiest and the most refined and also serve up a pleasant driving experience. The Korean duo also score highest on feel-good factor. Of the two, it's the updated Seltos that's our pick. There's a freshness to the Kia both outside and in, and the addition of a panoramic sunroof addresses its one big miss of the past. With the Creta due for a refresh of its own in the coming months, the stage is already set for a rematch. Watch this space. It's a hot, hot October's day, but the real heat is in the very mid size. Nice, nice, nice. Now, when it comes to SUVs, boot space is something that is very important, especially when you have to carry a body. As you can see, <laughs> plenty of space here, the body won't be uncomfortable. Yeah, da, 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 da. What? Yeah. <laughs>